Hello my friends, I'm Brett Larkin and this video is date night with the wall. So we are going to only be doing stuff at the wall. This is definitely going to be a restorative, yin, gentle, all levels practice. So grab your props if you have them. Um, two blocks would be good. And if you have either an eye pillow or I'm just going to use my shirt, really nice to cover your eyes in some of these postures just for deeper relaxation to have like a full blackout going on. Scoot your seat right up to the wall so you're right there. And then you're going to lie down and the first thing we're going to do is just an inner groin opener, <laughs> groin opener. Um, we're going to take the legs in a wide V. So depending on who you are and your level of flexibility, this might look kind of like this for you, like totally okay to have the knees bent. Um, and this is where if you do have blocks, you know, you can even like support the knees. And if you're really flexible, you definitely want to keep the legs straight. And then you want to make sure you're as close to the wall as possible. So the challenge here is like getting as close to the wall as you can. So you kind of have to shimmy I might feel a little silly to really get your seat as close to the wall as possible if you're flexible. And if you're still working on your flexibility in this area, no big deal. You'll just be a little bit farther away from the wall and it's okay to have the knees bent. And I'm going to take us through some variations of both bent knee and straight leg stuff. So first we're going to start with the legs straight if you can straighten them. If you can't straighten them, no big deal. While we're here, I want you to think of your tailbone lengthening towards the wall. So if you slip your hand um, underneath your back, your low back should be on the floor or almost on the floor. It's not popped up, right? So think of knitting your front ribs together and then gently lengthening your tailbone towards the wall. Try to keep the feet somewhat flexed here so they don't have to be hyperactive, but they're not totally just hanging out. So our first 15 breaths are going to be here. If you have that eye pillow or something that you're covering your eyes with, you can put that on your face. Just have a little blackout moment here. Always helps me relax. And then take your left hand to your heart and your right hand to your belly. Some of you have been asked me on Facebook if it matters, if it's left hand or right hand on heart, and you know, just do whatever's comfortable for you. I like left hand on heart, right hand on belly, and I think that is the traditional way. And now we're just letting gravity take over. We're going to play a little game. And the game is to see if we can get our right hand to always lift before the left. So you're breathing into the belly first. So the right hand lifts, then the left hand lifts. Breathe into the chest, and then exhale all the way. And again, belly. Breathe into the chest. Exhale all the way. Again, breathe in, belly chest, exhale all the way, just a few more times on your own. So legs are straight for this variation, if you can get them straight, and if they're bent, it's totally fine too. Imagine your breath was the only way that you had to talk to your body, like it was the language between you and your body. And cultivating that sense of importance with the breath, sort of how would you breathe? How could you breathe bigger in this situation? And last three breaths, get it really big.
Good. And now if you have the knees um, bent, I want you to bend them a little bit more. And if the knees are straight, I want you to now bend the knees. So you're actually coming out of it a little bit. So it should feel like your heels are sliding together on the mat or on the wall and your knees are bending more deeply. And now let the knees relax again. So this should feel like a little bit different of a stretch. So instead of feeling like it's exactly the inner groin, it might feel more like it's higher in the groin, if that makes sense. Like if it's more, it's more towards your hips. So it's a little bit more happy baby than, um, than wide-legged forward fold. And here, just think about the knees being really heavy. So you can always bring your heels a little closer together if you don't feel it, and then let the knees be really heavy. And for this one, keep a slow, steady breath in and out through the nose, but I also just want you to move your left hand so that you can feel your heart beating. Imagine each of your knees had a rope around them and attached to the rope was like a cinder block of 50 pound weight. And just let the knees get heavier and heavier and heavier. Keep lengthening the tailbone towards the wall. Eight more breaths here. This, is, this can be intense. It's definitely intense for me right now. Last two breaths, make them really big. Okay, now's the hard part. I want you to re-straighten the legs, or if you could if you can't straighten the legs, just go back to position one. So now we're just returning to position one that we took before and just notice how it feels different. So legs are straight, if you can get them straight, or the knees are bent if you need them to be bent, but you're angling for that wide angle position as opposed to the happy baby where we were before. Back to position one, let gravity do its thing. And this time you can relax the feet even more so the feet don't have to be as flexed. Keep feeling the breath in the body. This is definitely intense, even for me. And if you're not feeling it enough, you need to scoot your seat closer to the wall. Right, the deepest version of this would be your sits bones are touching the wall like they are for me. And if it's too intense, right, move your seat away from the wall, so. A wall is a good date. It's very flexible in terms of what it, what we needed to do, what we needed to do. Three more breaths. Feel the breath and the belly and the chest. Exhale all the way. Last one, huge inhale. Fill up all the way. Feel your back broaden along the mat. Exhale completely. Okay, listen carefully. Take your hands to the outside of your thighs. 
Bend the knees really gently so you're drawing the heels back in towards one another. And you're going to bring the soles of the feet to touch. And then just let your knees press apart. So again, pending your flexibility, you might be way up here and even farther back from the wall than I am. You might let the um, soles, soles of the feet touch the heels drop down closer towards the groin. And so we're just in a butterfly against the wall. So same pose that we do seated. And then it can be a little hard to keep the heels touching, especially if you let the pose, let the heels sink down, in which case just kind of have the toes touching. So it's okay if it's like this and not exactly like this. It's okay to be kind of here and not exactly here. But really let those heels melt down the wall best you can. And then for this one, optional, but I invite you to reach your arms up overhead and clasp opposite elbows. So it's like you're framing your face, so you're holding opposite elbows here. And just take that. And if that's too intense or that makes you feel like your low back's arching off the floor, don't do it. Just take the hands back to heart and belly or any variation that feels good. And you can move the chin from side to side. So I'm just taking the head side to side. Some gentle movement. Go super slow if you do this. Three more breaths. Breathing in and out through the nose. Good, and then just take the opposite clasp if you have the arms overhead. So if you were clasping opposite elbows like this, just do it like this. Be here four more breaths. Really see if you can breathe into every crevice of the torso. So filling up the shoulders and the top of the chest. And last breath. Good. Take the legs straight up now. And for the next one, you're probably going to have to adjust your distance to the wall. So what we're doing is we're coming in to thread the needle at the wall. So you're going to take the right ankle over the left knee. And you're going to slide the left foot down the wall until you feel the hip stretch. So if you're really close to the wall, this is going to be really intense. So if your seat is really close to the wall, this is going to be really intense. You can always back, right, like shimmy back, whoop, shimmy, 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 away from the wall. And then if you need to make it more intense, you can slide the foot down the wall even more. For your arms, for this one, I want you to gently take the right hand to the knee and the left hand to the ankle and just use the right hand to navigate the right knee towards the wall. Just a little bit, just subtle, nothing crazy. And once you feel that stretch engage, you're keeping the left foot flexed, you can do whatever you want with the hands. So I'm just going to lengthen them alongside the body, palm face up. And we're breathing here, 10 breaths. And you can think here of both of your sitting bones lengthening towards the wall. So sometimes in this figure four shape, the pelvis can get torqued or twisted a little bit. Like the right hip may be rising up. So it's okay if that's happening, but just see what you can do with your intention and your breath to kind of just glide the right hip back down and send both sitting bones with equal force and equal intention towards the wall. 
keep that left foot flexed best you can. Notice if it's totally hanging out. It doesn't need to be violently flexed, but it does need to be flexed. Five more breaths. Last breath, really big. Good. Gently take the right foot back to the floor. Reach both legs up just for a moment. So we're just doing legs up the wall here for a moment. Just feel the difference between the two sides. Right hip as compared to left hip. And then take the left ankle over the right knee. Bend the right knee, slide the right foot down the wall, adjusting your seat. Remember, two sides are often very different, so you might have to shimmy closer to the wall, shimmy farther away from the wall. And then same thing on this side. Let's take the left hand to the left knee, and gently press the left knee towards the wall. Take the right hand to the ankle. And again, just gently press left knee towards the wall. Not hard, not forcing, just so we can feel the stretch maybe in a more three-dimensional way, if that makes sense. And over the course of the next few breaths, you can let the arms be any way that you like. Maybe re-lengthen your spine away from your sits bones. Keep that left foot flexed. Five more deep breaths. Last big breath. Get really big. Exhale all the way. Good. Take both legs up the wall. And you can just stay here, legs up the wall for a big finish. Or you can join me in goddess pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be here with legs up the wall for about a minute. And then I'm going to take goddess pose, and I'll show you how to set that up. So if you're happy with legs up the wall, you should just stay there. And if you have a bolster available to you and blocks available to you, you can transition to goddess with me at the end. 
One minute, legs up the wall. Just let the whole body relax. Soften your knees. So notice if your knees are tensed up. And even if you're really flexible and your seat can be directly against the wall, for legs up the wall, for Shavasana, like I like to take the seat back a little bit. It's more comfortable. And then yeah, just soften the knees, soften the joints. Just let the heels press into the wall. Cover the face or the eyes if you can, if you're not already. You're happy with the arms alongside you or any arm variation you like I'm also going to offer to you having your arms in a diamond shape above the head so you'll place one palm like right palm on left elbows bent like a diamond shape diamond shape and you can just place that above your head I always really like that in this variation Stay here and legs up the wall for another two, three minutes. If you're joining me in goddess, you're gonna just bend the knees, pull the knees into the chest, roll over to the right side. And to set up for goddess, pretty simple. You'll need a bolster and blocks. So if you don't have a bolster and blocks, definitely stay and legs up the wall. Take a block on the highest height rest the bolster on the block like so. And then I always like to have two blocks for my knees as well, but that's completely optional. You'll take your seat so it's right up against the bolster. And then you'll just gently lean back and blanket, really nice to cover yourself with the blanket. If you have a cervical neck pillow, you can also put it right here. I'll just curl up this blanket. Good, and then soles of the feet touch. And I like, even though I have the range of motion to be, you know, very flexible, I like to place blocks underneath the thighs because it protects my low back. It's more restorative for me. So you're welcome to do that too if you have enough blocks and then just take the palms face up if you're in goddess. And if you're in legs up the wall, just rest. Two more minutes, total relaxation. Come out, if you're in legs up the wall still, you'll just draw the heels down, pull the knees into the chest. And for goddess, I want you to take the right palm to the floor, the left palm to the floor, and just really use your hands to gently come up. Just walk yourself up. And then I always like to take a little forward fold as a release. See what feels good for you, and then use your hands even to close the knees. 
We'll just end together in a moment of seated, seatedness, centeredness. Just come to a comfortable seat, just, just for a moment. Hands face down on the thighs. Breathe in, feel the crown of head stack directly above your two sits bones. Maybe lean back in space. Feel your chin parallel to the floor. Deep breath in. Crown of head directly over sits bones. As you breathe out, just melt the shoulders down the back. And breathe in, fill up. Exhale, take the collarbones back in space. Good. Last breath. Breathe in. As you breathe out, just let the heart lift. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed this date night chill class at the wall. Give me a comment down below. Let me know how this class went for you. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Tell a friend to subscribe to my channel. It's the number one way that you can help support me in free yoga online. Definitely download my mobile app full of classes so you can do yoga even when you don't have Wi-Fi. My podcast and a ton of amazing yoga resources are there on the app. Just search my name in the app store. And so, so much love from my heart to yours. Namaste.